AMD didn't say no to working with Intel. Qualcomm bought Arduino and Microsoft making everything worse again. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, October 8th, 2025. As a reminder, we do have our drawings for our PC giveaways over on our Twitch channels this coming Friday at 3 p.m. South African Standard Time. We've got a 5090 Falcon Northwest Talon on grabs with Reese's face all over it. We've got a 9070 XT Falcon Northwest Tiki with the South African flag on it. And we also have a 5070 Ti PC that we're giving away over on our music channel, which some of you asked in the comments yesterday, is it copyright free? No, we retain the copyright, but you are allowed to use it in your music. We're just not gonna copy strike you on YouTube. We're not gonna claim your videos, even though we uh, retain the copyright for the music. You need no royalties, just use it and uh, enjoy it in your content or listen to it while you're doing your work day. And the CEO of AMD had her work day yesterday where she was talking about their partnership with OpenAI over on Bloomberg. And Bloomberg asked, what's going on with this Intel rumor? You're gonna work with Intel? You're gonna make chips at Intel? What's going on there? And Dr. Lisa Su, measured as ever, uh, responded in a very non-answery way, but also didn't shut down the possibility, which is something that could have happened, saying, well, um, as you know, the supply chain is something that we work on, um, you know very uh, meticulously. I think we have a very strong supply chain. Uh, we're certainly deeply partnered with, you know, TSMC across the supply chain. Uh, you know, just to that earlier question, uh, we're absolutely prioritizing building in the United States because that, I think, that's super important. This is the, um, the US AI stack. We want to have as much of it in the US as possible. So obviously placating some of the desires of the US governmental administration, trying to build chips in the United States, this open AI partnership kind of helps to fill that, not necessarily shutting down Intel, also not giving a ton of room for it to happen, but also could be a feasibility that's gonna happen in the future moving forward. Again, just not a no. That's, that's what we're taking away from this. But in case you still want to stay on AMD, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor. The basis for any solid gaming PC is a motherboard that can handle all your needs and new components. And today's sponsor, ASRock, knows all about what makes a good motherboard with their Phantom Gaming X870 Nova Wi-Fi motherboard. Holding on to your AM5 Ryzen processor is a user-friendly board with impressive DDR5 memory support and two blazing M.2 PCIe Gen 5 by four slots, as well as two Hyper M.2 two slots and one Gen 3 M.2 slot. The storage doesn't even stop there because this bad boy also has two SATA 3 connections as well. All of your terabytes worth of drives are also kept safe and cool with the included thermal heat sinks. ASRock has also made the XA70 Nova Wi-Fi super easy to work with, including an easy release slot for your most precious GPU. Not only has ASRock designed this for convenient building, but to look good in your system after the fact. The silver accents and pops of color set this apart from your run-of-the-mill motherboard. As the name also suggests, there's no need to hardwire whatever PC is sporting this board with its mega fast Wi-Fi 7 support. Where you can plug some very necessary wires into is the expansive back IO, which features dual USB 4 Type-C ports for up to 40 gigabits per second data transfer. We've got our Phantom Gaming X870 Nova Wi-Fi built up in a powerhouse of a PC with a 9800X3D and a 5090, and this guy's doing an incredible job of keeping everything running tip-top performance. If you want to upgrade your current system with a nice new X870 board from ASRock, check out the Phantom Gaming X870 70 Nova Wi-Fi for yourself by the link in the description below. Thanks to ASRock for sponsoring. Well, you can partner that ASRock Nova Wi-Fi motherboard with a GPU and then slap this on there. The GPU mirror is back. Japanese company Nagao, which released this back in 2020, is releasing it yet again, allegedly due to popular demand. You can tell it's kind of old because they're highlighting all of these 10 series cards. That's a 10 series Strix. That's a 10 series Gigabyte WinForce card. It's it's essentially just supposed to reflect the bottom part of the shroud of the GPU and make it so that you can look at it. And it's kind of nice. It, you can purchase it on Amazon over in Japan for roughly $21 equivalent in Japanese yen. It was available on eBay back in 2021. So I actually picked one up as part of this video three years ago where I did show off using a, a GPU mirror. It wasn't great on the massive ASRock card back then because the card was a little bit too big. I can't imagine that it's uh, better now. If you have a smaller GPU, maybe this is an accessory that you want to check out. But uh, $21 versus half a million, 
very different circumstances. Asus showing off how they made their $500,000 Astro 5 kilogram gold edition Dahab GPU, which I know I've been corrected in the past that Dahab means gold in Arabic. And so me saying golden Dahab is redundant. However, Dahab is the name. It's the physical name of the card. And so they actually made a non gold infused version of the Dahab called the Dahab core. And so like the specification that it is gold or it's fully gold or it's non-gold is necessitated by how Asus is doing all of this. But speaking of how they're doing it, they released this video over on Billy Billy, 15 minutes long, showing off the entire process of making this half a million dollar 5090 that is just infused with five kilos of gold. And it was a commission that turned into an ambitious modding project with just the shroud being made out of it. It has engraved cloud and logos and it actually has functional fans and a PCB and all of that. They concluded by saying that it was purchased by a private collector with proceeds going towards Billy Billy Charity supporting education for children in rural areas. Hopefully part of that was also paying for the commission of the artist who actually made the GPU. But in case, uh, you know, you need to save money for an expensive card, Reese might be able to help you. I don't know if he saved people half a million dollars. Probably. He's been doing this for a while. Yo, welcome back to Europe to Deal, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Yesterday was the start of Prime Day. We found a a couple of cool deals. Now it's Prime Day Day 2. Here's some of my that favorite ones from... Oh yeah, no, I, I, I brain. Here deal. First up, we have the Bose Soundlike Flex Portable Bluetooth Speaker going for only $99, making it $50 off. But then next up, we have the Samsung 990 Evo Plus NVMe M.2 SSD with the four terabyte version going for $199.99, making it $128 off. Next, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D desktop CPU for only $338 and it's available. But we also have the EcoFlow Delta 2 portable power station for only $349, making it 50% off. And lastly, we have this Alienware 27 inch 1440p 280Hz QD OLED monitor going for $449.99. You get the extra $50 off if you sign up for a Dell account and claim your personalized coupon. And hey, with that, them's the deals you can- I'll personalize your coupon, buddy. Hey, thank you, please do. We're gonna be doing another Prime Day stream later on today, so stop by. Do it. Do it. Well, we just Google thinks they're getting a bum deal from the Supreme Court because they asked them to stay with a temporary injunction, the third party app payment system that's supposed to go into effect as of October 22nd or just in two weeks. This is coming after the whole lawsuit that went between them and Epic Games, which got ruled in Epic Games favor that should allow people on Android to use third party payment systems without having to give a kickback to the Google people. Supreme Court denied this temporary injunction Junction, so it does look like it's gonna have to go through, especially since the actual appeal to the Supreme Court is not gonna start until October 27th. So they were just trying to get it on pause while they went through the appeal system. Supreme Court's not allowing that, and Epic Games obviously considers this a victory. Google not thinking that, saying Android provides more choice for users and developers than any mobile OS, and the changes ordered by the US District Court will jeopardize users' ability to safely download apps. While we're disappointed the order isn't stayed, we will continue continue our appeal. So all that's gonna be moving forward. We'll keep you updated as that progresses and if anything changes with the appeal that Google is gonna be making. But speaking of big news that's happening with two different companies, Qualcomm announcing that they are buying Arduino, the tiny board manufacturer who makes open source boards that a lot of people like to use for various different tinkering tasks. A lot of people being skeptical of this acquisition because uh, Qualcomm not necessarily known for being the most open company and Arduino is known for being that, but Qualcomm did say that they would retain their brand and mission and open source ethos and support for multiple silicon vendors. And Arduino will retain its independent brand tools and mission while continuing to support a wide range of microcontrollers and microprocessors for multiple semiconductor providers as it enters this next chapter within the Qualcomm family. So it still needs to be approved by regulators and all that necessary red tape that needs to happen. However, they did launch the Arduino Uno Q, which is gonna be a Qualcomm based dragon wing processor supported microcontroller board that you can use currently. It's supposed to be coming out later this month with pre-orders opening yesterday. One of the concerns with this was the dragon wing chip that goes on it might not necessarily be available for you to build your own board later but Qualcomm told Jeff Geerling in his video that it should likely uh, be made available in the near future no it's not actually right now but they're saying that it could potentially uh, come out later so let me know what you think of this acquisition does this uh, affect you is Arduino your go-to of choice I've seen that the open source part of Arduino is the big deal its performance is kind of lagging behind some of the 
other competitors in the market, but this uh, could potentially change things up, especially with most of the comments I'm seeing of this being like, well, it was nice knowing you. It was nice, it was nice having Arduino while we had it. And what we're getting from Microsoft is bad things, but I wanna talk about one good thing that's happening in their latest insider preview, dark mode coming to File Explorer, Windows 11. That's a pretty big deal. What's also a big deal, and we gotta talk about, is what Microsoft is doing with Windows 11, because we are just a week away from the security shutdown of Windows 10, unless you pay for extended security updates, and it appears that Microsoft has a four-step plan for what they're gonna be doing with Windows 11. Step one, shut down Windows 10. Step two, make Windows 11 even worse for people. Step three, step four, profit. Because one of the clear moves by Microsoft with the transition to the latest operating system has been forcing users to have a Microsoft account in order to use their precious software. Which let me remind you, not even Apple requires that. And now with the hourglass emptying for 10, the Zune folks are once again locking down those pesky little ways you've been able to install 11 with just local accounts. One of the most popular methods was banned a few months ago, the Bypass NRO, and now they're shutting down even more in the name of security and user friendliness. They're specifically stating that these local commands to bypass things inadvertently skip critical setup screens, potentially causing users to exit with a device that is not fully configured for use. So users will need to complete this with internet and a Microsoft account to ensure their device is set up correctly. So you know it's for your safety that you have fewer choices, especially ones that you used to have. Microsoft needs you to log in, get their ads, OneDrive bloatware, and more installed on your system for it to be running properly. This appears to be a big bummer for a lot of people. A lot of individuals like to have local accounts for very justifiable reasons. Again, Apple with macOS allows you to do local accounts, Linux, I don't know what happens on Linux. You know, they probably they probably have to like uh, give a uh, like an offering to to Linus Torvalds or something like that. I, I I really don't know. But let me know what you think of all that down below in the comments. While I see what you had to say in yesterday's episode of Hot News, we got. I am Spencer saying last year I bought about 250 euro worth of AMD stock just because yesterday randomly checked and it was at plus 100 percent. So I sold it, made 250 euro, and got myself a Steam Deck LCD using the AMD stock to buying an AMD part. Good, good, good work. And then Hold always saying, open AI deals don't seem like a healthy way of doing business. What do you mean? You've got open AI needs GPUs. So they announced that they're partnering with companies like Nvidia to buy GPUs. Nvidia stock goes up, then they make a lot of money, and then they can use that to subsidize the GPU deal with OpenAI, and Oracle's involved in that somehow, where just the announcements raise stocks so much that it's like, oh, that's how you pay for the GPUs. You don't actually need to do anything with them. The stock valuation is what drives it up. It's awesome. It's free money. And the Master F with the question about Intel's upcoming Panther Lake SKU saying, why would the premium X chip only have 12 PCIe lanes and the non-X non-premium have 20 PCIe lanes. Weird. I thought about this uh, before filming and uh, I didn't I didn't explain it, but it makes a lot of sense. They're utilizing the PCI Express lanes for the graphics card. The X chips have eight more GPU cores. And so they're utilizing the iGPU as using your GPU. So they're, they're using PCIe lanes for that. And so when you only have the regular integrated setup of four XE3 cores, then you have more PCIe lanes to potentially add in a, a GPU device or what have you. So it, the GPU is utilizing the lanes is what it appears to be, which makes a lot of sense. And then Applicable saying, where is that desk mat from? This little guy that I got, I picked it up on Take Lock here in South Africa. It's 200 bucks, which is which, which is Rand. In dollars, it's about $11.59. So I like it, matches the hot news vibe. That's that's what we're going with here. And then person Joe Niney saying, the amount of people in these comment sections who act as if AMD is a good friend to them is disturbing. Sure, they are more consumer friendly than alternatives right now, but they are still a large corporation that pursues profits. And I'm sure they don't care at all about your personal interests. Don't. Don't do this, don't do this. This is gonna be a fight. Everybody's gonna, oh man. The amount of uh, jockeying that happens on AMD's behalf on the internet is crazy. Listen, I love a lot of AMD products. I also tend to call them out when they do things wrong. I also call out Nvidia and Intel when they do things wrong. People don't uh, appear to like like the negativity on AMD because they're viewed as the underdog still, even though they uh, very clearly aren't in a lot of spaces, but um, you know, 
uh, be, be kind to AMD, all right? This $342 billion company needs your opinion to be positive of them, otherwise they're not gonna survive, okay? And this episode's not gonna survive any longer. I'm done. See you back here for more of the Hot Tech News later.